Today in Kerala, a unique movement has been launched, a movement by the people for the people. It's called Movement for India's Financial Independence, involving various sections of the society, trade unions, from the workers, from students. The entire community had converged here for a Maha Satyagraham to protest against the anti-people policy, anti-economic policies and they have chosen this particular day that is 19th of July as the day to launch the movement, the day that marks the 49th anniversary of the bank nationalization that was done in 1969. Now during this 49 years, the na entire nationalization movement has transformed the Indian economy. Now as we approach our golden jubilee year, there is a process of reverse nationalization which is on the anvil. Public sector banks are being targeted. 12 banks have already gone under PCA which has imposed a ban on lending and every day their position is worsening. Now this merger acquisition closure has always been on the government's agenda. But Given that the next year the government has to face the general elections, any such move could backfire. Like they had to take off the FRDI bill after a movement began throughout the country which was led by IBOC. And in this backdrop, they want to give the public sector banks a bad image. And that is why the banks have been put under PCA despite a turnaround plan was on for all the 12 banks. Now at this juncture, we feel we need to connect with the common man, people from all walks of life, be it a student or a homemaker or NGOs or self-help groups or salaried class, farmers. We have to take everyone on board to build up a strong resistance, a resistance wall that would thwart the anti-people, anti-economic uh, policies of the government which is bent on destroying the public sector character of the banks and general public sector as a whole. Now, this is a very crucial year for us. There are internal issues to be addressed. The wage revision is one, where the members are looking up, up to us. They are expecting a, a decent wage hike. We have already prepared a charter of demands and we have demanded scales which are in sync with what is being paid to the government employees. Now the IB is totally silent on this issue. We are all aware that IB has offered a paltry 2% during the first meet, following which a two-day strike was called. But something has happened after the strike. There has been absolutely no move from the IBA side to take the issue forward, to get it resolved. Although there has been clear-cut direction from the Central Labour Commissioner to resolve the issues amicably. Now we were absolutely open. We wanted an assurance. We have some serious issues to be addressed like there is a fractured mandate. Six banks have not given their mandate. So for any officers organization to take part in the bipartite, unless this issue is resolved, we cannot proceed with the wage revision talks. Now we have met the IBA officials, we have met the DFS officials and a lot of uh, discussion has taken place in various aspects. We have submitted a memorandum on behalf of the four officers organizations uh, regarding our wage revision, regarding the fractured mandate. We have also uh, given a uh, note on the Graduate issue, we want uh, to be paid from a retro retrospective effect from 1st January 2016. And the ministry officials have been quite positive on that. But they feel that the talks should start. And we feel that unless this issue of mandate is cleared, we cannot proceed with the talks. So we are bracing up, we have to gear ourselves up to put pressure on the government through various organizational actions that will be only possible after the EFBU meets, which is likely to happen in a very short time from now. From All India Bank Officers Confederation, we have sent a letter to the convener of EFBU 
to convene a meeting forthwith so that whatever was discussed following the strike we had uh, met on 12th of uh, june 12th of june at chennai there were uh, many uh, procedures which ha which were to be adopted like discussion with clc discussion with dfs discussion with iba going to the individual banks and approaching their zds and cmds for the re revised mandate but nothing has happened as of now we are expecting a quick move on the part of your view we are as a very major component of your view we want that your view should meet immediately and chalk out a detailed plan an organizational action plan so that we can carry forward the momentum we can carry forward the interest of the our members who are expecting a decent wage hike we are who were expecting uh, a full five day banking instead of the second and fourth we want all saturdays to be off there are several other demands pertaining to certain several benefits which we have detailed in our charter of demands now this is the internal part on the other side of it while addressing the cause of our members we also have to be very aware that the banks are under attack and to to save the banks from possible mergers amalgamations and liquidation we need to from form a broad alliance with the common man with our stakeholders with various trade unions the sgs ngos the resistance groups to build a solid wall of resistance which would send a very strong signal to the government that you cannot take us for granted we will not allow public sector banks to be uh, dismantled which form the backbone of the indian economy and public sector banks have contributed significantly to the gdp growth of the country and we strongly would oppose any such move to destabilize the public sector banks of course people are aware they have been given a bad name due to the mounting humongous nps for which the employees and officers are not responsible in any way we have also challenged the provisions in the court of law and we will be uh, meeting the various uh, segments of the society including the members of parliaments for a discussion on nclt and the provisions which are uh, giving the public sector banks a very bad image we will be making a presentation before the joint parliamentary standing committee on finance we have sought an appointment so we want to carry forward our movement involving everyone so i would appeal to our members to depose faith in the leadership to take part in our organizational actions and also to form a bond with the common man so that next time when we go on any agitational program including strikes we have the sympathy support of the common people and so so that there could be a strong resistance of the government's move and it would make a significant impact on the outlook of the government and they will definitely come for negotiation talks and definitely with the elections around the corner they would will not be taking any measure that would go against the sentiments of the common people see we have to build up the momentum through various organizational actions we have to find innovative ways of uh, protest and demonstrations like there could be dharnas there could be hunger strikes there could be relay hunger strikes there could be uh, mass demonstration at uh, district headquarters and metro cities and capital cities uh, we can think of other ways of protest of course strike happens to be one of the major weapons so we have to ultimately if our demands are not met we have to ultimately go on strike and there has been a demand from the especially the younger generation for an indefinite strike that is also not ruled out but that is of course our last weapon but we have to keep up the pressure through various uh, correspondence communications parleys and organizational action that would involve everyone this is the battle we have to fight for our survival of the public sector banks at the same time ensure a decent wage revision for our members that is our prime focus 
For that, we appeal to all sections of the bank employees and officers to join us wholeheartedly so that we can carry forward the movement in the right earnest so that there will be no friction amongst us. Everyone will stand united to achieve our demands. Any indefinite strike is the last possible weapon that you can use, right? So we have to take a call before implementing such a decision. So we have to keep up the pressure as I said. There could be one day strike, there could be two day strikes, there could be three day strikes. Strikes combined with holidays so that it would make four or five days of continuous uh, strikes banks not being uh, kept functional. So we want to keep up the pressure before we can unleash our final weapon that is the indefinite strike. During the FRDI campaign we had a fantastic response from the common man because we could approach them and we could make them understand that their hard earned deposit was at stake. We amassed several lakh of signatures from across the country. We had approached the common person, common depositor who comes to the bank that your deposit is at stake, is at peril due to the, this bill, draconian bill that is on the anvil. Now at the same time, if we can convince the common man which, with whom we are dealing day in and day out that the very existence of this bank might not be there if they don't support us in our movement. The banking diaspora is, would be shrunk uh, in the garb of having, there are a lot of theories going out, too many banks, having niche banks, consolidation banks, consolidation of banks, so that the banking space is being shrunk very carefully. There is no recruitment, no additional recruitment. Every month, the number of retirees are not matched by the number of recruitment. So they, there will be a gap and branches will be closed down if there are mergers. So the common man would be affected, the lending would be affected and if these banks are privatized or these banks are closed, the small marginal farmers will not get their loan, the small traders will not be getting their loan, the depositors might not have a place to keep their money and that too another uh, private banks could crop up and the, we all know the history of private banks between the independence and 1969 over 600 private entities had failed. So that way we have a connect with the people but as they, we are involved in day to day life perhaps no other organization can reach out to the people that, as the banks do. So we have to build on that relationship that, that trust they have that they are also our stakeholders. What we are doing is for the greater interest of the nation. Uh, our economic independence is at stake. Our political independence is at stake. So as the today's movement, MIFI, the theme of the movement was to reclaim our financial independence. That can only happen through a robust banking system in which the public sector banks play a major role. This is the policy of the government. This is the policy of the government. In unbanked areas, banks are not being opened due to this uh, profit making concept. It says that banks will not be viable in a remote village. So on, on that score, we have business correspondents doing business for the bank. In the name of financial inclusion, a wide cross section of people are being financially excluded. They are having to pay for service, banking service. They are having to pay charges that normally they would not have to pay if they had there been a bank branch. So that slowly banking has been outsourced. Bank branches are not being opened in so-called unviable locations. So that way the banking facilities are being shrunk. Every day you will find that some bank branches are being closed or merged. Rural banks are the next targets. Rural banks are sponsored by public sector banks. And these banks are also under PCA. 
they are also unable to lend. So that way the credit flow will be affected in, especially in the rural and semi-urban sectors. See, the present government had a clear-cut agenda. We had Gyan Sangams and Indra Dhanush that was primarily launched to destabilize the public sector banks. There was a clear roadmap to merge banks and to privatize it to remove the government holding over 51% but that, that has not happened due to the resistance that uh, mainly the bank employees have uh, they have formed and this issue has also been taken up duly in the parliament uh, there have been resistance groups they have been quite negative publicity of the entire so, so the government mission has not been fulfilled they, they look at this public sector banks as a, a prospective uh, gift to the big corporate houses who are going to take it over who are itching to take it over so that their dues are not paid the big corporate houses are many of them are willful and skillful defaulters and they have been exploiting the public sector banks over the years for their own aggrandizement so they are now the soft targets they do not have any intention to clear their dues so if they can buy a bank they don't have to pay the dues as simple as that the numbers the numbers that we see are contradicted by the what we see on the streets we hear of employment but we hear reports that there is a jobless growth the farmers are not getting their dues the workers are not getting properly paid there had been tremendous agitation by the farm farmers everyone every segment of the society has strong resentment over the policy of the government which had promised uh, very bright days but that sadly that has not happened see banks will have to very uh, concentrate on giving uh, credit to that section of the society which needs it, it it most we have to finance the small farmers we have to finance the ngos sags so the small traders so that there is employment generation as well as they can they can also sustain the economy instead of the funds being channelized to a few corporate houses which are enjoying uh, the i think the sympathy of the government uh, the rest scenario is pretty much gloomy we find certain uh, few companies they are growing exponentially so that way uh, we need to spread the credit the healthy uh, credit deposit ratio should be maintained otherwise we cannot sustain this growth from an organizational point of view all india bank officers confederation is aware of the aspirations of the youth in our communication to department of dfs and rbi we have uh, brought out the angst and frustration of the younger generation the work life balance is one that has been affecting we have written a letter to the chief justice of india demanding that the lok adalats not to be scheduled on second and fourth saturdays which are weekly offs instead having them on first third and if possible if there is any fifth saturday we seriously feel that many youngsters are on the verge of despair because of this work life balance and work pressure and especially the pressure to sell third party products which we call cross selling now this is also an issue we had discussed with dfs officials and we have pointed out they have also they are also very concerned about this uh, so called cross selling that is going on in different banks in the garb of uh, garnering miscellaneous income uh, we feel that most of the cross selling that is being done uh, basically uh, is mis selling that is uh, the customers are not being sold the right kind of products they require instead uh, all the senior function is want 
they are looking at the numbers not looking at how the number is being achieved now in our organization too various affiliates are bringing in young people so that there is no disconnect with the leaders all india bank officers confederation has this philosophy that only serving members can be can lead the organization comrade dt franco who had in his 15 months tenure he had taken aibuc to a new height he had made aibuc visible he had been the voice of protest he has been the symbol of hope now on his superannuation he has handed the baton over to me and i wish to carry forward the legacy that has been left by comrade dt franco in carrying forward the mighty organization with a special focus on youth with special focus to involve more and more women into various activities we plan to hold youth conferences every year uh, women's conferences everywhere in every state we want to hold youth conferences and all our affiliates are consciously trying to bring in youth in, into various prime organizational positions and that that is the way forward we have to pass on the baton to our next generation that is how only an organization can prosper so that is one way that youth can connect with youth of course we are there we are also young uh, i am also 25 with 30 years of experience so that way i can also relate to our very young people because i have been interacting with young people since the last so many years having uh, been a sort of mentor and guide to them uh, i have uh, uh, conducted coaching classes for promotional aspirants and my own affiliate is doing a splendid job of opening an academy for getting into banks through clerical or professional officer route we are also uh, coaching uh, started a coaching center for the banking exams and the promotional exams and apart from that we are also into several cultural and sports activities which can involve the youth who need desperately a break from the routine banking and they have we have a lot of talent we have a lot of talent we have to only channelize the talent and involve them in more and more into organizational activities so that they will lead the battle tomorrow they will carry the flag of aibuc and they will make the organization go higher and higher